Last fall, when I was trying to run a five minute mile, I was reminded of the fact that I have incredibly tight hamstrings. I've never been able to touch my toes, and as much as I stretched before and after each run, my lower body actually got tighter and tighter as that challenge went on. So this time, I wanna make flexibility a challenge in and of itself to see how much I can improve my hamstrings with daily intentional stretching. And in order to do that, the first thing I have to do is measure out my baseline to figure out how bad this problem really is. The tips of my fingers barely make it to my shins to reach the 32 inch mark. And that's with my knees slightly bent, a detail I didn't realize until I watched this footage back. So that's my goal. I wanna see how much I can improve my flexibility in eight weeks. So this is day one and I picked up a belt to hold my legs in place while I am doing my hamstring stretches. I have a clock here so I'm going to be timing myself uh, for 60 seconds to hold each stretch. Let's get started. I try to get in 5 to 10 minutes of stretching every morning, as well as before I do any lower body or cardio training at the gym. Finally, I finish off my days with a 15 minute stretch in the early or late evening. Oh my gosh, I'm so close. I'm so close. So far, I've already started to see some noticeable improvement. However, I'm still struggling to stretch both hamstrings at the same time. That's because my left hamstring is still a lot tighter than my right. To address this, I've been trying to stretch both legs together for longer periods of time by sitting up against the wall so I can read or watching a basketball game. To help me make the next step in this challenge, I've booked an appointment with Nava Dabby, a yoga instructor and studio manager for Moto Yoga on St. Clair. Just do a toe touch. Yeah, and you can bend your knees. Like, don't uh, worry about that, yeah. So that's pretty much, and that feels tight. Yeah, so your hamstrings are pretty tight. Now, if you were to bend your knees quite a bit more, and then find some length here in your spine. Like yeah, exactly, let me get you a block. So we started with a standing forward fold, which is recommended to do in a wide stance. So the wider your stance, the easier it is to find the stretch, a little bit safer too. But as you move along with the stretch, you can bring the feet a little closer together, always making sure that there is a little bend in the knees and that the spine is extended so that you get the safest and most length in the hamstrings. So you want to be really careful on the way out because hamstrings are elastic. So especially when you're stretching them to your limit, you don't want to just bounce right out of it because you can have a rebound effect and injure them. And the second exercise that we worked through was a lying down with the leg extended. So when you lie down, you have the length in the spine already taken care of for you, and you're just using the strap to extend the arms so that you can get the stretch through the back of the leg. And the more you lift the leg up to the sky, the more of a stretch you're gonna get. And the last exercise that we worked through was more of a yin variation. And yin variation meaning that we held it for a little bit longer. And when you're holding postures for longer, you wanna have as much support as possible. So we had a bolster underneath his head so that his head was supported, it wasn't hanging out in space, and we tilted his pelvis a little bit with a roll of blankets so that we got, again, the safest and most length through the hamstrings. I start working through the stretches Nava gave me once every day. Gradually, I try to take each stretch a step further, and I breathe in and out through my nose to keep my body relaxed. As the weather warms up, I start going outside for light jogs. And I stop for a break every 10 minutes so I can stretch out my hamstrings while they're active and warmed up. Mix in some foam rolling every couple days and I should be well on my way for fast results. While weeks one through five produce relatively quick results, 
for the past two weeks, my progress has effectively stagnated. I don't know if this is just diminishing returns or if this is about as far as my body is ever going to stretch. So I've reached out and I contacted the Runners Academy and I asked Chris if there are any tools in sports science that might be able to unlock even just a couple more centimeters of mobility in my lower body. When I meet with Chris, one of the first things he brings up is fascia, which is a term I first learned about in my meeting with Nava. As Nava described it, fascia is a connective tissue found under the skin as well as inside our internal organs and muscles that helps hold us together and gives our bodies their form. Chris shows me a model of the fascia line running from the back of the skull all the way down to the base of the feet. Chris wants to see if he can increase what we would call my hamstring flexibility by actually working out tension up and down my fascia line. So we mark out as far down as my fingers will reach at the start of the session and then we get to work. We start with some table work, followed by acupuncture. Followed by more acupuncture. Followed by running electrical current through the acupuncture. Our session ends with cupping therapy on my back as I expand and contract my spine. One thing Chris is very clear on is that all these techniques are experimental, and the results will vary person to person. For me, all this work gets me almost two inches closer to touching my toes. At the end of our session, Chris runs me through a series of eccentric exercises that involve loading your muscle with moderate resistance while stretching it out. Mix in these exercises along with the routine Nava gave me for the final seven days. Regardless of what my final measurements come in at, here's what I've taken away from the past eight weeks. Number one, you have to hold static stretches for at least 60 seconds. I've always assumed that I have tight hamstrings because of genetics, but whenever I was working out and stretching, I would typically hold my stretches for 30, 40 seconds, and that's just not enough to actually change your range of motion. Second, everything in our bodies is connected. When I went and worked with Chris, he found I was holding a lot of tension in my adductors, which is an area of muscle tissue in my inner thigh that I never think about, I never stretch, but activating those muscles and releasing that tension opened up my range of motion, so I got an inch and a half closer to touching my toes. And finally, try to relax when you're stretching. And I know this sounds obvious, but when I think back to where I was in the beginning, I was wincing, I was breathing heavy, I was doing everything I could to try and force the stretch. All this really does is make your body tighter and tighter. Instead, what you wanna do is breathe in and out through your nose, don't force things, and maybe play something that helps you relax. That's what I'm gonna do tonight as I do my last round of stretching, and tomorrow afternoon is the moment of truth. Okay, so one thing I can tell right off the bat is my knees are definitely touching the floor this time. I don't have to cheat. This position doesn't hold pain the way it used to. I'm just gonna take a few deep breaths before I go for it. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's so much better than before. In the course of eight weeks, I increased my flexibility an average of one inch per week, taking my controlled floor stretch from the 32 inch mark to 40.5 inches. And yes, some of that progress came from physical therapy work that may not be available for everyone, but 90% of the work I did in this challenge were stretching exercises I did in my own apartment with relatively basic workout gear. So I think that makes mobility training one of the most accessible challenges that almost anyone can try out. I of course want to say a huge thank you to everyone at Moto Yoga and the Runners Academy for all their help on this challenge. And I want to thank our sponsor for this video, Blinkist. If you're like me, you're someone who goes into each month with a long reading list, a list that is probably more ambitious than you actually have time for. And if that's the case, I think you might really enjoy Blinkist. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best insights, the need to know information and condense them down in just 15 minutes that you can read or listen to. Blinkist has a wide selection of self-improvement books, which I think lend themselves to summary perhaps more than any other genre. 
Some of these titles include The 4 Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss to The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Personally, I really enjoyed the books in Blinkist's society and culture section, as I found their summaries allow me to dip my feet into a number of topics and subjects I otherwise wouldn't have a chance to explore. And because they're only 15 minutes, Blinkist audio readings were the perfect length for me when I was doing yin stretching on the mat. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash goalguys will get unlimited access for a week to try it out, which you can cancel anytime during the seven days, and you'll also get 25% off if you choose to purchase a full membership. If you do, I really recommend you check out BS Jobs by David Graeber, and So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. I really enjoyed them both. Thank you guys again for watching. Uh, the next video coming up from my end will be me trying to learn to do three muscle ups in under 60 days. Uh, by the time this is posted, I think I will have 23 days left, so fingers crossed.